All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the different denoisers we have available to us in Redshift. And the whole reason I got this idea for a video was because somebody left a comment in uh, a previous video I made talking about upscaling renders to save time uh, about their process for denoising uh, their own projects. And it was really involved, it looked really interesting. I haven't had a chance to dive into it myself, but it got me thinking, um, about the different denoisers we have available to us in Redshift and how well they work, um, what quality do we end up with, how does the speed compare to say something that isn't denoised, and so that's what I want to talk about in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, now here's the scene we're gonna be using today, or I'm gonna be using, uh, but I wanted to just show the setup of this as well, and so if all you're interested in is the results of the denoising, um, I will have a chapter set up in the video, so feel free to skip ahead there. But for those of you interested in how um, I made the thumbnail and the uh, uh, animation we're gonna be seeing in After Effects, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about first. And I'm gonna go pretty quickly through this process. So I started with uh, a platonic, okay? And ultimately, I animated this platonic using Cappuccino. And if you haven't used Cappuccino before, it allows you to record the keyframes or the movement of something you do um, in your perspective view. So it could be movement, it could be in another property, uh, but it allows us to uh, keyframe and create that animation in real time. So all I did was start the real time and then just kind of made some little bit of a loop here. And the idea was to get it to kind of loop. I did an okay job, but if you play this back, you'll see that it's not as smooth as it could be, doesn't quite loop as well as I would have liked. And that's where I then came into my timeline uh, to work with my keyframes. Now, I really don't need any scale or rotation keyframes, it's just position. And I honestly don't even need Z either, it's just X and Z, X and Y I should say. Uh, but yeah, we have a lot of keyframes here. It would be nice to be able to smooth these out. So once I've selected all my keyframes, I can then come to the functions menu and choose key reducer. And really with this, you get kind of one shot at this, so to speak, but as you start to increase this, um, you can see how it's reducing my keys, but still really maintaining the overall shape. And so um, honestly, it's almost like an all or nothing thing with this particular setup, but this can be very, very helpful if you're you know, grabbing something that uh, has mo -grab, uh, sorry, mocap animation on it, or just something that you want to kind of clean up. Uh, so something like that looks good. And then all I would do is make sure it starts and stops on the last, um, on the same value, right? So if this one's zero, this would also need to be zero. And then in the Y position, you know, I can just take this value and copy it into the last one. And there we go. This should now loop a bit better. It should be smoother. And that's looking pretty good. Okay. Honest, and I should also get rid of the uh, ease in there. For the cloner, what I did is took some different spheres with some different materials there. Um, since uh, we are going to be eventually rendering this, um, one is a subsurface scattering material, the other is a wood material. Then I have a glass with scratches and a knurled metal material. And, and um, I tried to stick with the um, new standard material, but I, I did use one material from the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. And honestly, the textures for the wood as well as the scratches for the glass also came from there. Um, applied those materials to spheres, put them in a cloner. In the object mode, I'm cloning onto the platonic 140 times, and then using a random effector to change the size of this. Okay, that's why some are smaller, some are larger. I'm also using dynamics. That's why everything um, eventually kind of puffs out. Okay, uh, and the thing. The only thing I changed in the dynamics was follow position so that um, they all didn't just fall uh, or explode in this case um, once we hit play. So keeping a value of follow position, um, something like 10, uh, means it's gonna follow the existing animation um, that's uh, been applied to our platonic here and, and also apply that to our cloner. So that's pretty much it for the setup here. And the idea was to create a scene that I could then render and compare um, you know, all of our different materials. And so the way I set that up in our render settings um, is by using different presets here. And all I did was use the low bucket quality to keep things consistent. And then 
just change the, uh, the different denoising mode for each render here, including one that was not denoised at all. And I tried to keep some relatively simple settings here or uh, nothing too complex or even too crazy high either, um, just for comparison. Uh, now, I do want to point out that if you go into the advanced tab, several of these denoising options have different um, properties, okay? And I did not go in and make any adjustments there. I try to keep this as simple as possible um, for comparison purposes. And while uh, it might be, I'm sure it's possible to get different results, better results, faster results from these by making adjustments, I didn't think it was necessary for this test. And then I created a take for each of those different render setting presets uh, so that I could render these all out at once. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump in and talk about um, the uh, results here. Okay, now the whole point of a denoiser, denoiser, as you might guess, is to remove noise. Typically, it's going to do that uh, at the expense of detail. And so what we're really looking for here is a denoiser that removes as much noise as possible, keeps as much detail as possible, and also does so very quickly, okay? So we'll save the time discussion for the end, but let's talk about quality first. So um, to start with here, we have the non-denoised the non denoised image or the, the image that did not have a denoiser applied. And actually there it is. Uh, what you'll notice is we have a lot of detail in the glass, still some noise on the subsurface scattering, maybe even a touch of noise in the knurled metal. Um, but overall, not too bad. And, you know, if we were to play this, you really can't see much of that noise at all. There's motion blur on this. So that's something else I wanted to point out that, you know, uh, it's not the end of the world if you have noise, um, if you can't see it because of motion blur, because of, you know, the animation. So first up, we have the optics. Okay, and just kind of toggling that on and off. You can see we get rid of a lot of the noise on the subsurface scattering material. We do, however, lose um, some of the detail on our glass. It kind of gets blurred, um, perhaps a bit splotchy. And I'm hoping some of this is coming through in the YouTube video. You know, it is compressed. So hopefully a lot of this is coming through. Okay, but I doubt it's quite as obvious as it is to me. Um, and I think a really good example is this sphere right here just how much softer and blurred it is compared to um, without the denoiser. So that's optics. We then have the Altus single, okay? Um, that kind of blurs and softens things even more, in my opinion. And uh, we're seeing it uh, in the, the glass. Um, I'm also seeing it in the knurled metal. So what I'm seeing here is not so much as splotchy as it was with the optics, but just softer, blurred. I'm losing some of the pattern, some of the detail here, okay? And if single was good, then dual is perhaps a bit worse um, because everything that I just said about single is kind of made worse by dual. So there's more softening, there's more blurring, more losing of detail. Um, actually, it's interesting. I'm losing, I'm seeing a little bit less detail in the glass, but a little bit more in the knurled metal. But I am still losing a lot of the pattern um, compared to the image that did not have a denoiser applied. Okay, so that's important to point out. My reflections on my subsurface scattering material also tend to look a lot softer, almost like I increased the roughness. So that is also important to point out. And then lastly, we have our OIDN denoiser, which ultimately uh, does a pretty good job of preserving the detail, okay? Preserving the pattern, it does a pretty good job. It is a bit splotchy as well, so it's very similar to optics in that regard. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of the splotchiness here. It almost looks like compression artifacts. Um, so, you know, once again, that's probably part of the reason why it's not going to show up good on YouTube. Uh, but even with all that said, all of these look pretty good, okay, with motion blur, all right, and while we're watching this animation. So all of them can work um, depending on how much detail you have, how much movement you have. Uh, and, and honestly, they all look okay just on their own, right? If I didn't do this comparison and randomly picked 
a denoiser, well, then I may not realize that, uh, you know, I'm seeing these issues where I'm losing detail in the glass or some of the pattern in my metal. Um, once again, especially if that's in an animation. Okay, so let's talk about render times because that's another part of the story here. And surprisingly, um, you know, there was quite a, a bit of variation with the render times here. So starting back with optics, okay, the render time was 53 minutes for this. All right, not too bad. Okay, so quite a bit faster than everything else. Let's just fit everything. Um, and so I was pretty impressed with this overall. Remember, the quality was okay. There was some splotchiness, um, but for 53 minutes, you know, kind of hard to argue with that. Um, moving, actually, we weren't even looking at the optics. There it is. But in terms of the Altus single, a um, little bit longer render time, one hour, 16 minutes. That blurred a bit more of the detail. It got rid of some of the splotchiness, though, that I was seeing in the optics. So, um, you know, honestly, might be the way to go. Uh, Altus Dual, while it was a bit better in some regards, um, less splotchiness, a little bit less detail, and a render time of two hours and six minutes, probably not one I'm going to be using very often. Uh, we then had the no denoised image at two hours and 13 minutes. And with that, I do want to point out, we still have, you know, some noise left. And even with motion blur, I'm still seeing this. So seeing the noise. So that's something to keep in mind that um, even though it took less time than, say, the, the last option, uh, it was not perfect. And none of these were perfect. And that's something else that's worth pointing out and considering that would you rather have a bit of noise but the most detail? Would you rather have um, a faster render and have a little bit of splotchiness um, and perhaps a little bit less detail? Okay, so all of these are trade-offs you want to think about when you're rendering a project. And then lastly, we had OIDN. i um, got to be honest, not sure why I would ever use this, at least with its current settings, um, because its render time is twice that of the non-denoised image. And so even if I go, all right, you know, I'm not happy with the amount of noise here, chances are I'm going to be able to increase the quality of my image and still have it render um, in under that four hours that uh, the previously, the OIDN um, animation took. So those are the render results. Now, what I want to finish off here is just kind of with my conclusions from this. Um, first of all, when it comes to denoising, we are sacrificing something, whether it's speed, whether it's quality, that is just the way it's going to work um, with the, the current setup of these denoisers. And the question then becomes, what is more of a priority for you? Is it render time? Is it render quality? And that's nothing new. We've always had to make that kind of um, decision, you know, based on, uh, you know, presets here, or if we're um, doing it the advanced way using, um, you know, samples min and max and our overrides or whatever the case may be, you want to think about, um, you know, what uh, you need to prioritize if it's speed, if it's quality. If it was up to me or what I might consider doing uh, going forward is using the Altus single, okay? Because that uh, was a pretty good combination of speed and quality. And the quality of any of these denoised images is going to be based on the original quality of the image. So if I gave this a higher quality image to start, say, medium, okay, or if I even took it a step further and just used a value in my threshold in between low and medium, that's going to give me a better looking image because um, I'm going to have less noise for the Altus um, or any denoiser to remove. Uh, and with a bit of luck, that should also preserve detail. So that's probably what I'll consider going forward um, for my workflow. One of the other last things I want to point out here is that if you're concerned about a denoiser ruining your image, well, there's a workaround for that, okay? Because um, in the advanced section, at least, in these uh, denoising options, we have the ability to denoise AOVs, okay? Which is great if that's something you want to do. But if you're like, you know what? I'm not sure. I would like to have a fallback, okay? Um, what you could do is in your AOV manager, right? Add a beauty. AOV and make sure denoise is unchecked here. Okay, so for all your other ones, you know, you can check uh, denoise. So that way, you know, it'll match your denoise beauty. 
Okay, but if you're like, man, just as a worst case scenario, uh, if that denoiser screws up in the animation or perhaps I'm losing too much detail, I'd like to have something that isn't denoised. Well, then just add that denoised beauty and make sure to uncheck or uh, leave that unchecked, I should say, there. So that way you, you kind of have the best of both worlds. And that's something else I will do um, going forward. So that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. And until next time, take care.